Okay, so I want to talk about uh, remote event uh, queues and how they work and kind of the gotchas with them. A lot of people don't even know these exist, um, but I think it's really important to understand this if you're using remote events and um, especially if you are building any sort of framework or whatever that is creating these for um, an end user developer or anything like that. Um, I, I recommend understanding the queue system for remote events. Now, as far as I can tell, this is not documented. Unfortunately, I, I read through the various um, remote event stuff on the dev hub pages and whatnot, and I, I didn't find anything on this, but I know that exists and I can demonstrate it. Um, and so let's look at it. So imagine uh, in our script here, our, uh, maybe we're managing player data somehow. So let's just set that up really quick. And then, you know, maybe load data from a data store. We're just going to kind of make it up. In fact, we're just going to make it a number to make it simple. Um, and so imagine this is more complex data than a number, but you get the idea. Now, and let's say um, periodically this data is changing. So in this case, maybe data at that random 1 to 100. So we don't know how often, obviously we do here, it's every two seconds, but ideally, you know, at some point your data is changing um, on the fly and on the client, we want to observe that data. Now let's go on to the client and look at that. So we have a data changed event here. And the idea is that we want to fire that event uh, when the data changes. Right, and so on the local script, this might be simple. We might have something like game replicated storage data changed on client events connect function data. Okay, so pretty simple. And then in the script here, all we have to do is fire that event, right? So we might have something like game dot replicated storage dot data changed fire client player data and then we'll have that exact same line when we change the data and so I'm going to run this and we'll see that it captures our changes as it goes however a lot of people might look at this and they might be worried they might say hey this is a and this is a race condition because I'm firing this event right when the player joins and I'm connecting to the on client event and then receiving that data. So what if this line of code doesn't connect in time and I've already fired my initial state of my data? Well, what happens? And so because a lot of people expect that to be a race condition, uh, they will start doing things like this. They'll create a remote event Maybe this is get data, and they have a remote event, uh, sorry, remote function. They might have a remote function here, and its uh, sole purpose is just to get the initial state. Um, so they might have something like, you know, game that replicated storage, get data, and then, you know, somehow <laughs> fetch data, return 10 or something. You know, they might have something like this, and then on here, same thing. And so they might do something like that in order to make sure that uh, we sure we for sure miss any race conditions and we get our initial data. And this is a common misunderstanding of how remote events work. And it's sometimes annoying depending on how you're using them, but it's also a nice feature that actually what's going on under the hood is that when you fire uh, data onto a remote event, whether it's from the server to the client or the client to the server, um, all of that data that you fire, uh, the, re the recipient of that, of that data, for instance, if we fire on the server to the client, and the client is a recipient, the recipient will hold on to that data within that object somewhere, I don't know, um, and it will hold on to it until the first time it's connected, and then it will flush out all of that data. So even though we might fire this data before 
we connect to it, we'll still get that first piece of data because it gets put into a queue and flushed out the first time we connect to it. Okay, let me demonstrate. Let me get rid of this remote function jazz here. And again, we see data changed, right? And we see that we're firing the client. Well, let's just print out firing data to client. We'll print out here, listening for data change, and we'll hit run. We'll look at that. So we see firing data to client, and then we see listening for data change and then we see the data change. But some people might say, well, there's a network delay there, and so even though uh, you got listening for data change printing out there, that doesn't mean that the data showed up yet, right? Okay, fair, but let's just make sure of it. I'll, I'll do a three second delay, hit run. It's gonna wait for three seconds, and then there we go. We get our initial data, the 10 there that we set, and then off we go with the remaining changes going through. So as you can see, even though we may have fired this before the client has connected to it, they still get that data. Now, a couple of caveats with this. Uh, firstly, this only applies to players that, have, that are already in the game. So if you fire like, uh, events to all the clients, that's only going to cache on those clients that have already joined. Again, it's the recipient that holds on to the data. So if you fire this event 10 times and then the player joins the game, they're not gonna see that data. But if you fire it 10 times once they join, they will get that data and the first time they connect, it will uh, bleed out through the event. And like I said, they queue up. So let's get rid of this while true do loop for a second. And let's actually just uh, print random data We'll do 10, 20, 30, 40, and we'll see that all of these come through uh, in order uh, like so, even though we have a little delay. We'll get rid of the same amount of delay. We'll do a one second delay. And then after one second, we see that all the data comes through, uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, we're good to go. So that's pretty nice. That means that as long as our player's already in the game, uh, that we don't have to do any funky things to get the initial state as long as our server script in here is communicating that initial state to the player uh, once they join. So that simplifies things a lot. Okay, another gotcha with this. This only seems to apply on the first connected uh, client event thing here, right? Or even if it's on, if it's on the server, same thing. Uh, the first connection to this remote event is the one that gets the data flushed through. So what I mean by that is if we do another connection to that same event, we'll underscore this as one, underscore this as two. If I hit play, we'll see that only one got that data. So if I bring back this while true do loop, we'll see that eventually, uh, once that the client has fully connected, we'll see that the, the second one is also capturing data as it comes through too but only the first one to connect gets the cached or, or the the queued data flushed through it not both of them so that means that if you are syncing data across various scripts and you're relying on this queuing feature that means you should only have one entry point for that data to come through on a remote event like this and then maybe here you would dispatch out to some signal uh, the data and this would go out and you, the rest of your code would be able to listen to it or something like that so that's just uh, kind of another gotcha with it to understand. Lastly, uh, the only other thing I think it's, is worth noting here is that these queues do have a maximum size and they will exhaust themselves if you haven't connected something to it. So let me demonstrate that. Um, let me get rid of this one. And if I, if I just disable this code here, and then over here, you know, I'm firing uh, four times, which is fine, and then continuing to fire. If I hit run, I'm not gonna notice anything right? Nothing's showing up. I have no idea that something's going on. However, if I did this uh, a bunch of times, if I did it, you know, 10,000 times, and if I hit play now, I'm going to see some stuff in the output window. I see this message, remote event invocation queue exhausted for that remote event. And it even says, did you forget to implement on client event? <laughs> 
And again, this will happen the other way to the server too. It'll say on client or on server event. Um, so this is a good telltale sign if you get these messages that you don't have a connection to that remote event at all. So if I go to my local script to see, oh yeah, I don't have a connection. So if I reconnect and I run, now it's fine. So that's just another gotcha with it to be aware of. Um, but So there is a maximum amount of data that can be queued, um, but hopefully that kind of clears it up a little bit. So again, in summary, uh, remote events will queue their data that they receive until the first connection to them. That queue has a maximum size, but it's usually big enough that uh, it, it's not going to be a problem.